Ukraine's defense is crumbling. Russian attacks are more lethal than ever. For the last two years, Ukraine has been able to hold the fort, but now it seems like its defense is caving in. And why are we saying that? Because Ukraine is shooting down a far smaller proportion of Russian missile attacks than it was earlier in the war. Have a look at these numbers. In the past six months, Ukraine managed to intercept around 46% of Russian missiles. Last month, this figure further fell to 30%. A year ago, the interception rate stood at 73%. As you can see, there has been a steep fall in Ukraine's ability to block Russian missiles. This is according to Western media's analysis of Ukraine's own data. Russia, meanwhile, has significantly ramped up its assault. Over the past six months, Moscow fired around 45% more drones and missiles than in the six months before. It also doubled the number of Shahid drones attacks, over 2,600 to be specific. It also fired 114 ballistic and 46 hypersonic Kinzhal and Zircon missiles. Last year, the figures were 33 and 27. On top of that, Moscow has also repurposed air defense systems to attack Ukraine and use them to fire 175 missiles into Ukraine this year alone. We are talking about S-300 and S-400 air defense systems here. And how much of it was Ukraine able to intercept? It's pitiful to say the least. It could shoot down just 10% of the ballistic missiles. And as for S-300 and S-400 missiles, it has failed to intercept any of them. Not even a single one. And why is that? Why is Ukraine's defense failing so massively? You see, the Western-supplied Patriot systems are Ukraine's only reliable way to shoot down ballistic S-300 and hypersonic missiles. But Kiev has only a handful of them. And to top it off, it has exhausted the ammunition used in these, in these systems. Russia, meanwhile, is increasingly firing harder to hit weapons. And with that, it's not only destroying Ukrainian infrastructure and cities, but also sapping Kiev's already sparse supply of missiles. And what is Ukraine doing about all of this? Well, there is little it can do, but wait for the West to send more patriots. And this, by the way, can take anywhere between two months and several years, depending on whether they will come from existing stockpiles or manufactured on fresh orders. The air war may now come down to which side can outlast the other on missile supplies, and the odds don't seem to be in Ukraine's favor. It is dependent on its Western allies, which are struggling to send missiles on time. Russia, on the other hand, has its own stockpiles, and it's also capable of producing 170 missiles every month. Not to forget the drones and missiles it is getting from its allies. And if the numbers are to be believed, Russia is dominating the battlefield. Then what explains what's going on on the political front? If things are going well for Russia, why is Putin shaking up the Kremlin security team? That's right, he has sacked Sergei Shoigu from his longtime position as the country's defense minister. Nobody saw this coming. He is a long standing Putin confidant. He has served as the defense minister for over 11 years. Now, Shoigu will lead Russia's Security and Defense Council. It's a consultative body that advises the president. But what is the reason behind this? We cannot see. But there are signs that cannot be ignored. Last month itself, Russian officials opened a ground-shaking criminal case into one of Shoigu's deputies. I'm talking about Timur Ivanov. He oversaw military construction projects, including the rebuilding of the destroyed Ukrainian city of Mariupol, now occupied by Russia. For years, he lived high on the hog, flaunted his access to St. Tropez villas, yachts, Rolls Royces, until last month when he got arrested for allegedly taking bribes worth $11 million. Now, this was an ominous sign for Shoigu because Shoigu is himself no stranger to luxury. In fact, according to an investigation by anti-corruption campaigners, he lived in a $15 million pagoda-style complex outside Mox Moscow. It was registered to his sister-in-law and built on land bought by his 18-year-old daughter.
I don't need to spell this out. The mansion's ownership was disguised. What's more, since the Ukraine war broke out in 2022, the armed forces against under Shoigu, the armed forces under Shoigu have been plagued by rumors of careless spending, mishandling resources, and incompetence. And now President Putin has stepped in to replace him with an experienced technocrat. The reins of the Defense Ministry will now go to former Vice Prime Minister Andrei Belosov. He previously served as the Economic Development Minister and an advisor to Putin. The Kremlin indicated that Belosov was the man for the job, as military spending ballooned to 6.6% of the Russian GDP. Belosov's appointment means that Shoigu moves to head the Security Council. Despite the sense that Shoigu has been ousted, he will still remain in a high-ranking position. The question is, is Putin trying to keep Shoigu close yet detached from the system? Who's to say? To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.